When it comes to bailouts of American business, Barney Frank and the Congress may be just getting started. Nearly two trillion tax dollars have been shoveled into the hole that Wall Street dug, and people wonder, where's the bottom? It turns out the abyss is deeper than most people think, because there is a second mortgage shock heading for the economy. In the executive suites of Wall Street and Washington, you're beginning to hear alarm about a new wave of mortgages with strange names that are about to become all too familiar. If you thought subprimes were insanely reckless, wait till you hear what's coming. What's the future hold? Well, this shows... One of the best guides to the danger ahead is Whitney Tilson. He's an investment fund manager who's made such a name for himself recently that these investors, who manage about $10 billion, gathered to hear him last week. Tilson saw a year ago that subprime mortgages were just the start. We had the greatest asset bubble in history, and now that bubble is bursting. The single biggest piece of the bubble is the U.S. mortgage market, and we're probably about halfway through the unwinding and bursting of that bubble. Halfway. It may seem like all the carnage out there, we must be almost finished, but there's still a lot of pain to come um, in terms of write-downs and losses that have yet to be recognized. In 2007, Tilson teamed up with Amherst Securities, an investment firm that specializes in mortgages. Amherst had done some financial detective work, analyzing the millions of mortgages that were bundled into those mortgage-backed securities that Wall Street was peddling. It found that the subprimes, loans to the least creditworthy borrowers, were defaulting. But Amherst also ran the numbers on what were supposed to be higher quality mortgages. And they were frankly terrifying as data we'd never seen before and that's what made us realize holy cow things are going to be much worse than anyone anticipates. The trouble now is that the insanity didn't end with the subprimes. There were two other kinds of exotic mortgages that became popular called Alt A's and Option Arms. The Option Arms in particular lured borrowers in with ultra-low initial interest rates, called teaser rates, sometimes as low as 1%. But after two, three, or five years, those rates reset. They went up, and so did the monthly payment. So a mortgage of, say, $800 a month could easily jump to $1,500. Now the Alte and Option Arm loans made back in the heyday are starting to reset, causing the mortgage payments to go up and homeowners to default. The defaults right now are, are incredibly high at unprecedented levels and there's no evidence that the default rate is tapering off. Those defaults almost inevitably are leading to foreclosures and homes being auctioned and home prices continuing to fall. What you seem to be saying is that there is a very predictable time bomb effect here. Exactly. I mean, you can look back at what was written in 05 and 07, you can look at the reset dates, you can look at the current default rates, and it's really very clear and predictable what's going to happen here. Just look at this projection from the Investment Bank of Credit Suisse. These are the billions of dollars in subprime mortgages that reset last year and this year. Now look at what hasn't hit yet the Alt-A and Option Arm resets when homeowners will pay higher interest rates in the next three years. We're at the beginning of a second wave. How big is the potential damage from the Alt-A's compared to what we just saw in the subprimes? Well, the subprime was approaching a trillion. The Alt-A is about a trillion. Um, and then you have Option Arms on top of that. Uh, that's probably another five to six hundred billion on top of that. How many of these Option Arms would you imagine are going to fail? Well north of 50 percent. My gut would be 70 percent of these Option Arms will default. How do you know that? We know it based on current default rates, and this is before the reset. So people are defaulting even on the, the little 3% teaser interest-only rates they're being asked to pay today. That second wave is coming ashore at a place you might call the Repo Riviera, Miami-Dade County. Oscar Munoz used to sell real estate. Now his company clears out foreclosed homes. The business is just going through the roof for us. Fortunately for us, unfortunately for the poor families who are going through this. I wonder, do you ever come to houses where the people are still here? Absolutely. That's really a sad situation. I'd rather not meet the people. Why not? It's not easy to, to come in and, and move a family out. It's, it's just our job to do it for the bank. 
it, it's, it's just the nature of, of what's going on in the market right now. What is going on in the market right now? How much work are you getting? Every day we have 20, 30 assignments. A day? A, a day. Just your company? Just our company. And we're one of the few companies right now who are hiring. We, hire, we have to hire people because the demand is, is so high. People who've been evicted tend to leave stuff behind. The next house is usually much smaller. Banks hire Munoz to move the possessions out where, by law, they remain for 24 hours. Often the neighbors pick through the remains. Once the homes are empty, the hard part starts, trying to find buyers in a free fall market. Miami real estate broker Peter Zalewski talks like a man with a lot of real estate to move. We have 110,000 properties for sale in South Florida today, 55,000 foreclosures, 19,000 bank-owned properties, 68% of the available inventory is in some form of distress. They need someone to clean it up. What's the name of your company? It's called Condo Vultures Realty. What does that mean? That in times of distress, in times of uh, downturn, there's opportunity. And, um, you know, vultures are clean up the mess. A lot of people seem to think they kill, but they don't actually kill, they clean. <laughs> 